car van uh car yeah just up uh and welcome to DJ and TV tonight. Tonight we're going to be talking to four different entertainers, DJs who have changed up their business a little bit in 2020. So we're going to jump right into it. Our first uh, first guest tonight is Brandon Hevrella. Good evening, Brandon. Good evening, John. How are you? It's I've been a while. Well. Give us give us a little bit of feedback of what you have been up to here in 2020 as things have kind of gone completely haywire from a regular year. Little yeah, a little bit different to say the least. <laughs> um, we kind of just taking it day by day um you know had to make a few pivots and changes in in you know our business and what we are doing from just entertainment and djs when you know the government at least here in new york where we are was very strict in the beginning and was like you know you can't party you can't <laughs> dj you can't you know do that kind of thing um and it took a while for them to open up a little bit and say okay you can party in your backyard but it can't be more than 10 people or okay, you can have a DJ at a restaurant, but there can't be dancing and blah, blah, blah. So, um, you know, with all that, I know people were doing like drive-by DJs here and stuff like that, which was another pivot um, that a lot of DJs chose to make. We kind of went in two different other directions. Um, with our manufacturing side, I decided to start making uh, sneeze guards and germ barriers for a lot of businesses and schools and um, churches and stuff like that, because that was a need. So, you know, totally not DJ related, but uh, it's actually helping our business because now when the DJ events do come back, our workshop is way beyond where it was just for building DJ front boards. So now we have, you know, more capabilities uh, for when that does come back. And uh, another thing we did was bought a large, a large format printer to do vinyl signage and stickers and stuff. So that's been another you know, direction we went. And then to tie it together, I didn't want to lose the event side. Um, I love doing events and, and that kind of thing. So we partner with a local museum and we produce the haunted house. And now um, I'm actually sitting in my car because we just finished up the last night of a Christmas light show that we did at the same museum. So that was kind of another direction we did that just kind of ties it back to the event so that we're not, you know, totally out of it. <laughs> so, so now the, you had a, a, a workshop and you were producing DJ front boards, you were saying, correct? Right. Yeah. DJ front boards and uh, like the LED staging that we use a lot here in right. New York, um, LED cocktail tables and furniture, all that kind of stuff we were building in house. Nice. So you're able to basically do a little bit of retooling and that's where the sneeze guards and different things came in. Exactly. Yeah. Cause we were used to working with the aluminum framing that we use and uh, it's the aluminum extrusion. And then we are used to working with plexiglass too, cause we use plexiglass and acrylic. We just use the frosted white, you know, so that we could light it up from behind. And now I just had to, you know, call my suppliers and say, Hey, I need clear. <laughs> so how much of a learning curve was it to go from doing the front boards then to uh, retooling your workshop to do these different things? So, yeah, we use the term retooling on our website, actually. Um, and I guess, you know, we don't, there wasn't. Oh, nope, we lost the microphone. Oh, can you hear me? There you are. Now you're back. Okay. Okay. 
Um, yeah, so it wasn't as much, you know, retooling. We're using a lot of the same tools. Um, I kind of went in there one day, it was in maybe a month into like our shutdown here in New York. I went into my shop and I looked around and I said, you know, there's gotta be something here I could use to make money right now or, or do something with, you know, rather than sitting at home. And, um, I happened to be looking at like the sheets of acrylic and, and the, um, aluminum extrusions. And I said, you know what, if I build this in a frame, like I saw what the supermarkets were doing, I saw what the stores were doing, they were hanging them off the ceilings and stuff. So I said, I can build a frame, I can come down to the bottom, put like a T connector and put, you know, feed on or whatever. So I went into the shop one day, I threw together like a prototype and I actually used frosted acrylic because that's all I had there before I went out and bought the clear. Right. And uh, I was like, all right, this is kind of cool, but it's wobbly. I need to make the legs longer. And I just kind of experimented until I found a design that worked. Um, and then I put it out there online and that's so and then we kind of kept going and then as things progressed and we started selling more and we got you know needs for hair salons wanted them for in between their chairs but um they didn't want the tubing that we have because it was a tripping hazard so we had to kind of retool in that manner and start welding plates um metal steel plates that had more weight on the bottom and you know were flat so that there was no tripping hazard so that's kind of where the retooling came in but um like you said it was a little bit of a learning curve but uh we just kind of figured it out as we went and now that gives us the upper edge because we might be able to you know i don't know maybe use steel plates for front boards or you know something right, like yeah. that in the future so uh, if you look at a typical summer like you you would have had so many people working with the entertainment company uh as you were doing these different projects throughout the year were you able to continue to have about the same number of people involved or was there a reduction or how did that work out yeah. So, uh, in terms of like full time staff that we have, we have a lot of freelancers and stuff. So mm -hmm. it's kind of like call as needed, which, you know, almost as much as it sucks kind of helped us in this situation because it's a call as needed basis. So if there was no need, we didn't have to, you know, make those calls, but, um, the handful of guys that we did have on payroll, like full time, we did have to reduce a little bit in the beginning. We actually, we shut down completely. Right. We all were, were, you know, out of work. Um, and then as things started coming back, I took them one by one. I was like, Hey, you know, listen, I'll take you two days a week. Let's build some sneeze guards and get it done. And then the orders came in, we started doing that. Then we had event stuff come in. So I was able to pull a few of those guys back in. Um, but it was a significant reduction. And that was another reason that I made the pivot with the sneeze guards and a pivot with the, you know, printing was that, you know, I want to keep my guys on payroll and, you know, I, I want to give them a job. <laughs> I don't want them to have to, you know, collect unemployment through it either. So although it might not be ideal, I mean, right now we just had another office order 20, uh, 20 more sneeze guards because they had two cases in their office. They already ordered like 60 for their office cubicles. And now mm -hmm. they want to add like the in-betweens. And um, we're, we're, we like shrugged our shoulders. We're like, oh, we don't want to do this. We're done with it, you know, but it's like it's keeping food on the table and turning the lights on in the shop. So right. we got to do it. So I want to I want to go and hit into the printing side, but before we do that, um, is is that uh, building of of different assets like that in the workshop? Is that something you guys are going to continue on after things come back start to come back in twenty twenty one, or is that going to be something that okay it got us through? Now let's put that to put that to bed and continue on as entertainment. Yeah, so it's interesting because a lot of my guys have been bringing up the same thing too, and they're like, you know, are we are we screwing ourselves by? doing all this stuff and making ourselves broad and that kind of thing. And I don't think so. Um, from the business side of things, I mean, if the money's there and people are paying for the stuff, we can hire more people. We can buy more tools or better machinery that does more things on its own or whatever it is. Um, I think we can go in that direction if it, you know, makes sense business wise, I'd love to, you know, be able to build up that workshop and have guys there just to work on those things. So then if I need something for an event, I'm just, I turn around onto my desk and I'm like, Hey guys, can you, you know, build me a new front board and take a break from those sneeze guards or whatever it is um sneeze guards in particular might stop you know there's going to become a point where every business has them or we don't need them anymore hopefully mm -hmm. um so those might stop but we certainly will keep that workshop going and, and keep selling stuff yeah so so has there been any kind of uh, products that you guys have started or jumped into that you're like wow i would have never seen that coming but all of a sudden there was a request or or, or that motive that inspiration to all of a sudden bring something new to market did any of that uh, come as you guys were designing so we haven't done anything with that yet besides sneeze guards. I mean, we have designed a bunch of like custom sneeze guards that mm -hmm. were um, then brought in by like the hair salons. We designed ones that were on wheels to, to roll around and, and that kind of thing. So we've gotten a little creative with that, but we've been so tied up with that in the shop that we haven't gotten a chance to even experiment with event stuff and, and that kind of thing yet. Mm -hmm. um, so I am excited for that, but uh, we've had a few odd 
and you know odd and ends things pop up and we're actually right now we have a bunch of wood and turf at the shop because we did a covid testing site um and we had tents there we have trussing with banners and signage and stuff and uh with the recent snowfall we had here in new york the the ground's all wet it's soaking wet there's like mud under it so they're like we need something in the tent so that you know my employees aren't walking around in mud so they wanted us to put down a floor so basically we're putting down we're building a plywood floor that locks together mm -hmm. that can be moved from site to site and we're wrapping it in a turf so that you know it's almost like walking on an astro turf and they could you know clean it as needed and the water we're going to drill holes so the water drains out and so that's kind of like a unique project um that again i'm just sure we're going to be able to use those tools and skills and and experience in other ways and carry it over to the event side as well Excellent. Excellent. Let's jump into the printing side of it. Now, was this printer something that was on your radar that you were going to be getting? Or is this something that 2020 brought to your attention and you said, hey, we got to go this way? So it's funny because I've, I've always wanted a printer. Uh, we always, I've always been big on the branding thing. So I've always offered a lot of like corporate branding solutions to slap a logo on the back of our photo booth or slap, you know, slap a logo on our, our DJ booth or whatever it is. Mm -hmm. And um, so I've always been big on that. And I've always wanted a printer to be able to print my own little logos um, for the photo booth or whatever, something small. I was looking initially like 24 inches. I was even looking at like the, uh, the cricket, like the, you know, consumer level ones you could buy at Michael's. Um, and just cut vinyl with and that kind of thing. And I was looking at it and, um, you know, my guys know that I'm, when I get onto something and I'm like, I start seeing better things, I usually go for the better things because I'm like, Oh, it's so cool. And the potential it has and blah, blah, blah. So, you know, we were looking around at printers and I'm like, Oh, okay. You know, the 24 inch one's three grand and blah, blah, blah. And then we're looking at higher end ones. And this one happens to print and cut. So um, if I wanted to cut out oval stickers, I can have it print, you know, full color and then go back and cut out the stickers for me. I could do car wraps, vehicle wraps, everything like that. Um, so it was really like a, you know, multi-tool of, of printers, which is really cool. And um, I ended up going with the biggest model they had, which is a 64 inch wide printer. So we can do wow. those vehicle wraps. I don't plan on doing that now, but it is something that, you know, again, if the money's there, I'll hire people just to do vehicle wraps under us. And then when I buy a new truck, you know, my wraps free. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so um, it was something that, you know, it was on my radar was buying the biggest one out there on my radar probably not you know but um it just was something that was like you know what if we get this now god forbid we don't sell sneeze guards or events don't come back let's you know we'll teach ourselves how to do vehicle wraps and let's just wrap vehicles for you know whatever through mm -hmm. the whole winter or something to keep us busy so it gave us that opportunity um so, you know, I'm glad we went with it and we've been able to, you know, push that for doing stickers and, and large format banners and stuff like that. So it's been very helpful um, and completely unrelated. We literally just did it because of this one snowstorm, but we happened to start shoveling driveways too because it was on a Thursday. We didn't have our, our light show event till the weekend. So me and my guys were like, let's pick up a few snow blowers and go, you know, see how many driveways we can bang out. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so um, we went and did that, but it was to tie it together um having the printer was awesome because i turned around to the printer and i printed snow removal graphics we stuck stickers on the back of our cars we printed lawn signs and staked them all over town you know so it's just another cool thing that you know it's nice to be able to do in-house so it's definitely helpful so when you said the snowblowers you did you actually go out and buy snowblowers we did yeah we, we went out and bought two of them um mm. and some shovels and ice melt <laughs> and you were out good to go i i saw that yeah. and i was wondering it's like gosh did he go and take like i got my snowboard from home let's go <laughs> so i did actually have one for my house but it was like older it didn't work too well or whatever so we went out picked up two like bigger commercial ones that you know could do the driveways a little bit faster and we did really well we ended up doing like 37 houses in like an 18 hour period <laughs> oh my so uh it was cool and i'm sure we'll get more snow this season as well oh yeah that's i'm sure so, that's gonna be gonna be out there so uh, you yep. mentioned lighting um that you just you were just doing a lighting uh, event here tonight now, does that is that something that you were doing before with the company, the entertainment company, or is that something that you had to kind of adjust and add more to do lighting events? Yeah, so that's actually another pivot. Um, I, I don't know, like here on Long Island, we have like the Jones Beach light show. We have a bunch of like drive through light shows. It's a mm -hmm. Christmas light show. So they have big wire displays and like, you know, they wrap all the trees of a property or whatever it may be. And um, there's a bunch of those here where you drive through and they were very popular this year because they're safe and you could be in your car and blah, blah, blah. So with this museum, we partnered partnered with um they have a huge property it's a mansion you know estate so everyone can be socially distant and everything like that so we partnered with them to 
put on a Christmas light show, but a walkthrough one rather than a drive through. So people can come walk around with masks on, be socially distant. We set up Santa behind plexiglass to take pictures with the kids, um, which again is just because we were able to make that plexiglass and, you know, everything kind of ties together. We printed yeah. all the signage for the event and everything like that as well. Um, so it was really cool, but it was something that, you know, we did the haunted house with them. And that was another thing I had to buy everything for the haunted house. This was the same thing. I didn't, I own Christmas lights for my house, but I don't own enough that to much. decorate in the state, you know? Yeah. So we went out, um, and made a huge investment in Christmas lights. We bought, you know, I think over like 10,000 feet of regular Christmas lights. We bought 50 wire displays. We bought, you know, some blow ups. We bought um, wreaths and, and all garland, all types of stuff and decorated the estate with it. I even went out and bought like oversized nutcrackers, like eight foot high nutcrackers for in Santa's workshop and four foot wide presents and stuff like that. So it was all an investment that, you know, we'll be able to take with us. This event we just wrapped up today. I mean, when extremely well um we've already been talking about next year with them so Excellent. that's going to be happening but you know if it wasn't we had the investment now we have the inventory where we could have turned to any venue firehouse town whatever it might be and you know produce a different light show mm -hmm. um so that was very cool and uh, what happened ironically is after posting a picture or two of that setup um, at, you know, this commercial estate, we got a bunch of people asking us if we could throw lights up at their house. And, uh, you know, I have a hard time saying no to people. So that was like a, yeah, sure. We'll do it. You know? So we made some runs to home Depot. We ended up decorating like 10, you know, uh, residential houses as well, sure. which was cool sure. to, you know, carry those skills over. And again, it's something that, you know, if we got enough calls next year and it made sense to do, we'll probably do it, you know, pay some extra guys and do it. Um, if it's like we get one or two and we're just so tied up with events, it might, you know, Maybe fall not. under the radar and we'll go back to what we do, you know? Yeah. Brandon, uh, great information. Thank you very much for being on tonight. We need to jump on to our next, uh, next, next one. Uh, Brandon, if people want to reach out to you, what's the quickest way or best way? Uh, easiest way is probably Facebook or Instagram. You just find me nice and easy. It's my name, Brandon Havrilla. And uh, you can shoot me a message there or a uh, friend request me. That sounds great. Gang, we'll be back in about one minute. Thanks. Sean. Coming to us from the great state of South Dakota is the one and only DJ Jer. Good evening, Jeremy. Hey, John. How are you? I'm doing well. Tell us the story. What did you guys do in 2020 to stay alive? And oh, my good, gosh. Um, and as good looking well, as you are. I, what's that? And as good looking as you always are. Oh, yeah. I just got a haircut for this. <laughs> um, we Well, I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be completely honest. We I, I took advantage of some downtime, mm -hmm. and I got some good family time in. And I think, uh, you know, emotionally and, and mentally... Um, I think everyone kind of has to, has to do that. Um, you have to spend time with your family. You sacrifice so much. They sacrifice so much. So, and I'll definitely get into what we did as a business, but um, I really wanted to, I really wanted to kind of start with this because I think it's extremely important that people take the time. If you have the time, um, spend it with your kids, spend it with your family. We took a trip out to Yellowstone national park, which I never would have done in the beginning of, in the beginning of June. Um, but it was a great opportunity for us. Mm -hmm. Um, so, you know, it, it was, it was good family time, good time at the lake, but as a business, you know, we, we were kind of fortunate, John, because we started doing virtual events about three and a half years ago and we understood how they worked and what needed to happen. Um, once we saw that, okay, this is, you know, a lot of these people are canceling their in-person events. We're going to have to start doing some things virtually. Um, it really allowed us to kind of tune, fine tune things a little bit more for us. Um, so the virtual event, um, that really became a, a big part of our spring, a big part of our, our fall, um, summer, usually, you know, they, they don't do too much in the summer when it comes to corporates and, mm -hmm. and those type of things, but we did a lot of virtual galas. We did a lot of, um, a lot of things that, you know, just, we, we helped out a lot of businesses. Mm -hmm. Um, another thing too, was in the virtual aspect, um, we've actually had quite a bit of calls to help out with virtual funerals. 
um, drive-in funerals, those type of things. So people would actually come to the cemetery and usually you can never hear, you can never, um, you know, you can't really see what's going on. Um, so we have video wall, we have, you know, audio that we can allow the pastor to, um, to, to do the, 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 the session at the ceremony or I'm sorry, ceremony. at the cemetery. Yeah. And it allowed people to either stay in their car using an FM transmitter, um, or it allowed people to just hear it from the speakers that, uh, that we were playing. Um, that became, that became more popular in Minnesota because Minnesota is a lot more shut down or strict compared to what we are in South Dakota. Um, some other things we really took advantage of using our video wall this year. Okay. And some of the things that, you know, we were fortunate again to, we, we had already kind of started the process of doing in-person game show events. Um, we did a lot of them this last holiday season. And when things kind of shut down and people needed entertainment, for instance, the city of Sioux Falls, um, the city, city of Sioux Falls shut down the, the pools throughout the entire city. Mm -hmm. So if you don't know much about Sioux Falls, Sioux Falls is a is a small town compared to a lot of your bigger cities. Um, you know, we're at, we're, we're under 200,000 people, but it is the biggest town or the biggest city in, in South Dakota. And, you know, we, we kind of saw that people, you know, just watching social media and just hearing people complain, Oh, I can't believe they're not having pools. What are my kids going to do this year? Um, I'm, I'm circling back to why we did the whole game show thing or why we talked about yeah, that yeah. for Christmas. Um, what we what we did is we actually reached out to the city and said we have some programming ideas that are social safe um, that can be very beneficial for the kids and also the community. And this was our big thing. We really put a lot of focus in this project, and we reached out to a lot of um, a lot of businesses that I knew cared about the community and wanted to do something for the community. And it's not always just about giving money. Um, and that's where we couldn't, you know, we wanted to do something, but we couldn't just fork over a bunch of cash when we're trying to keep our business going and try to keep our employees employed. Right. So we basically used our talent and our equipment. So what we ended up doing was with our video wall, we actually set it up. We purchased a trailer, um, flatbed trailer, and we mounted a system on the trailer using trussing. And then we, we mounted our truss or our, our video wall on the trussing and we put some cool lights and stuff on it. Um, we mounted our EV speakers on it. And what that did was basically we created a traveling game show. Um, so doing all the game show stuff that we did for our corporate clients and things like that in the past, it, again, it kind of tuned us and said, okay, how can we utilize this and create entertainment? So we reached out to the city of Sioux Falls and said, we know that there's not a lot going on in Sioux Falls, but here's some fun ideas. Um, we did we did hydrant parties. We we would do a live DJ at the hydrant parties, getting kids excited, moving around, um, you know, burn off some energy. Mm -hmm. And you know, they they had a lot of people there. But again, it was socially safe, and you know, we they were making good decisions on um, still giving people something to do. Um, and then the game show thing, we again reached out to businesses in our community, and we got sponsors that were actually involved in um, helping us put this trailer and this video wall and, and getting gift cards. And I think this was the important part. So our job as entertainers, um, or I'm sorry, we get hired as entertainers because people can afford us or because businesses are, are, are staying busy or they're staying in business. So our focus of this project, John, was to um, help the businesses that are eventually going to need our services or are going to, you know, their, their employees are going to need a DJ for their wedding someday. Sure. Um, we helped keep those businesses and um, keep them open. So with that sponsorship money, we went out and we actually would go to these restaurants that were struggling and some of these other places that really didn't have the foot traffic. And we went out and we purchased um, gift cards from some of these restaurants and some of these, these businesses in, in the Sioux Falls area, um, really focusing on local. And it allowed people, when we did the game show stuff, it allowed people to win those prizes and actually go spend money at those places. Sure. Now, we did it strategically enough where they would be maybe $10 gift cards or $5 gift cards or $15 gift cards. It was never going to a restaurant and your whole meal was going to be paid for. Sure. Yep. So we got people in the doors to use the gift cards 
And then they would actually spend extra, um, extra cash or extra money to help revenues within those businesses. So that was one of our big projects that we did this year. Um, you know, and and then I really haven't given you a chance to talk. I've had a lot no, of excitement you're good, you're good. that I wanted to share. I'm only here. here to keep the conversation going if you stall. So okay, okay. Um, well, I won't because I got a lot to. I have a lot of fun things. <laughs> well, you've got um, seven minutes left or six minutes left. Go. <laughs> um, so, you know, as we were as we were going through that, a lot of people saw it, and next thing you know, we're doing um, we're doing parties for people that. They're like, hey, our company needs a boost. They need a morale boost right now. Um, can you do this in a facility for us? And we'll bring in our team and you know just pump them up and get them energized and have some fun with them doing games. And we actually booked a lot of corporate events um, doing that as well. So they weren't Christmas parties. It was just, we need to pump up our, our, our team here and get them excited. Mm -hmm. So come August, um, you know, usually that's when a lot of the Christmas stuff is coming in and booking. Uh, well, obviously there's not going to be a lot of Christmas parties going on this year. And so we started getting those phone calls from our, our normal clients back in May and June. We're like, okay, this is normal. Um, we'll have other people fill it and then we'll just work with them next year. And a lot of people were saying, you know, we're just not going to do a Christmas party, which as a business, it made sense because mm -hmm. a, you have to keep the safety of your, of your, uh, your workers, but also if their business wasn't doing as well either because of this whole pandemic, then it allowed them to save that and put that towards people's jobs and, yeah. and keep people employed. So I, I wasn't upset about it. I thought it was, I thought it was very smart on their end. Um, and they said, you know what? We appreciate your understanding because we had contracts with some people mm -hmm. and we said, you know what? Everything that you've paid, we'll just put it towards next year. So what that does is it locks us in to help them out with their party for next year. Not a big deal. But once we started getting those phone calls, we're like, okay, what are we going to do if we have no Christmas party going on? So we actually started taking everything that we were doing in the traveling game show and we were doing it virtually. And what that, what that did was basically we used certain software. We would use like OBS and, and uh, Zoom and things like that. And we would use these softwares to actually build our entire set of, of game show. And we did green screen in the background. Mm -hmm. So the board would change. I could do a Wheel of Fortune style game. I could do Family Feud. I can do all these different games. And it would be green screen behind me. And then I would be the host. And I had about four other guys that were helping with, somebody was running the uh, uh, the Zoom screen shares or the, the pinning. I had one person who was doing just the game show board. I had one person who was just taking care of OBS and then I had another person who was communicating back and forth with me. So if there were people who have questions, um, you know, they could type and then they, they would be able to relay that to me, but I could also see all that. And I could also hear that. So using the specific equipment that we've been using for years, it allowed us to create a virtual aspect in this and it went very successful this year. Um, we didn't probably push it as much as we could have, but again, I think people are in a really desperate state of we really need to think of our, our clients or we need to think of our employees mm -hmm. before we start trying to, hey, you know, we're going to spend some money on some entertainment. Um, it, it just made more sense for them to put money towards their their employees. And, and I thought that was uh, it was very bold, very good on their part. So. So Jeremy, it was, talk, it was a busy year, John. Talk about your staff a little bit now. In a typical summer, you have X number of people that are working for you. How did that change from 2019 to 2020 as far as were you able to keep people working with you or, or did some yeah, people? Yeah, great, drift? great question. Um, you know, the PPP plan was definitely a benefit for us. Um, but truthfully, again, and I'm not doing this as bragging, but South Dakota was very open mm -hmm. about providing events and doing things. We had a lot of postponements that happened, you know, in the beginning of summer, um, our fall state stayed extremely busy and we actually hired additional employees. We have, uh, we've now hired an additional full-time employee and we have two other part-time, um, that we've brought into our, uh, to our system because of some of the changes and some of the movement that we were creating, mm -hmm. um, just, just trying new things. And then it's like, okay, well that worked but I can't put that on his shoulders and his shoulders. I need to bring someone else in to focus on that. So um, like I said, we, I don't want to say we took advantage of some of these opportunities, but 2020, it definitely hurt our numbers. Um, we were supposed to be building a 14,000 square foot warehouse I remember that, yeah. and office space, <laughs> but that got uh, those, those breaks got pumped pretty quick when uh, 
after we signed our paperwork and then two days later, the government shut everything down. <laughs> so, um, yeah, we, we definitely had to look at the whole picture and say, okay, we can wait to create this building. And it just makes more sense to bring on a team. So when that building is ready to go up, we've got a great team to fill it. And yeah, there you are. You're doing some great. Jeremy, uh, just about out of time. If people want to get in touch with you and ask any questions or, or uh, bounce ideas off, what have you, what's the best way for them to do that? Yeah, they can always email me directly. Jeremy at djjer.com. Jeremy at djjer.com. I am an open book. I'll be happy to help anybody. And uh, again, I mean, keep your head up. Things are definitely going to turn around. It might not be right now, might not be tomorrow, but uh, if you keep working through it, you're going to have a great 21. And we'll get there, that's for sure. Jeremy, thank you much for being on. Gang, we'll be right back in about one minute. Thanks, John. So in our show tonight, we are talking about things that people have done to pivot in 2020, getting ready for for making money as far as, you know, in a world in which the DJ world is just kind of upside down. Next, we've got Keith Kikoris. I mean, we have Santa Claus. Oh, Merry Christmas, everybody. <laughs> How are we doing? We are doing well, doing well. Casey, this is, this is something that... Uh, Throughout the year, you've been t looking at different things to kind of pivot and, and do differently this year. So let's let's jump back ahead of the Santa, what you were doing throughout the summer, and then we'll get into the Santa here towards the end of our conversation. Well, there was a lot of crying in the shower, curled up in ball. No, you know, um, I've been lucky be because I am somewhat diversified. When this all started, um, being that I, for those of you who don't know, I have a bridal show production company. Well, in the very beginning, I took all of my leads from all of the shows, clumped them all together, and started selling a list with at least 5,000 guaranteed names on it to Chicago wedding-orientated vendors. And I have to tell you, that got me through March, April, and probably the beginning of May without a problem. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and then um, I also happen to own a company called Buddy Special Events, which is a cart based catering business. So we do the cute little hot dog carts um, and popcorn carts and cotton candy carts. So pretty much all summer long, we did a lot of very small socially distanced graduation parties, birthday parties. Um, we were at a, at a pop-up drive-in movie theater every single Friday night selling Chicago's finest uh, Vienna beef hot dogs. And um, we also got lucky. We hooked up with Home Depot and got involved with feeding, I think, like nine different stores um, <clears throat> for some of their, they have a thing called the Success Celebration. And so because Home Depot did so incredibly well, because so many people chose to take this downtime to work on their lawn, work on their home, work on everything, uh, they've seen record numbers and they yeah. share it with their staff. So they have a whole program called the Success Celebration. So we came in and did taco carts and hot dog carts. And then the fall came, and um, about that time, too, I had also, through our decor company, added the, the uh, lawn signs that are made on Coraplast that uh, we started doing happy birthdays and happy graduations, and um, I want a divorce, you know, in the yeah. front lawn, and all of those good things. Um, so I've just continued to pivot. I also started a website called the How To for the I Do com which is a, a, technically it's a national directory for wedding vendors. Um, we're really focusing on it in the Chicago market and in the Milwaukee market, but you can go on there and register your business for free. And, and then as we expand all over the country, if we choose to do that, um, there's, it's, it's kind of like a version of the knot, but it's, uh, it's a fraction of the cost. We're $35 a month versus $350 a month. So if you're in the Midwest, I would uh, 
tell you to at least check out the website, mm-hmm. see what you think. And then about in August, um, after being on my 700th Zoom call, um, I like made a smart aleck comment to somebody about how even Santa is going to be on Zoom this year. And the light bulb went off, and I wound up doing some research, and I connected with uh, an unbelievably nice DJ uh, named Scott Rousseau up in Minnesota. And yep. I know you know him as well, John. Yes. Mm-hmm. And he was kind enough to share with me his experience because he had set his business up for it. And uh, he shared with me what he knew, and we've been think tanking kind of ever since and exchanging ideas and such. And then I, it's been good because I've been able to do a lot of this myself. Um, I started in July growing this this big old beer, which will go officially be gone on December 26th when uh, this thing, when I go to the barber and it comes off and you guys get to see me again. Um, and then, um, <clears throat> but uh, we set the whole program up. I, I devised a website and it's all turnkey. It's easier to book Santa than it is to book a flight on American Airlines, to be honest with you. <laughs> it's super simple, super turnkey. And, um, and it's been great. And I've done, uh, I did the 30 Rock Buildings holiday event this year. I did U.S. Foods. Um, I've popped on to all kinds of different things, even if it's just a quick hi, hello. Last week, I did a bunch of first grade classrooms and second grade classrooms coming in as Santa. Um, I had never done one before. I was on an Indian reservation um, with a whole bunch of families that were homeschooling. So lots of really, really cool stuff. I've I've talked to families literally from Canada to, I mean, all over the country, Mm -hmm. all assets of the country. So, but as you can see, I went all in. So for anybody who knows what I normally look like, I grew this bad boy long. I've been to the salon three times to have it bleached. And um, <clears throat> so that's that's where we're at. Mm-hmm. So that's it. So I think we devised the, our little set here and it's worked. I, I think one of the cool things, it. Casey, is you're talking about, you know, you're starting to grow the beard in the in, in the summer. But the idea that you started in August to prepare for yep. a business that's only going to be a, like a November, you know, December type business. Like, it's like five or six weeks. Yeah. Yeah. My first appointment started like the week of Thanksgiving. And I had, I actually spent Thanksgiving here and my family totally understood. I'll be here Christmas Eve and part of Christmas day, Christmas day. I'm actually doing some socially distance in person visits where I'm dropping gifts off that Santa forgot to, uh, Bring the night before so the kids get to go crazy and come outside real quick and take a picture with santa and things like that but the 26th my family and i are we're doing uh we're doing a family christmas on the 26th so that i can be there with my nephew and niece and parents and things like that so so it is a little bit of a sacrifice but <clears throat> all we've done in 2020 is sacrifice and to, that has uh, been the year of that the, to pay the bills that so. is. Uh, let's let's jump back to the um, to the food carts. You did. Uh, you okay. mentioned, of course, taco. You mentioned the hot dog. Um, in a business such as that, uh, there's there's got to be you know because that people are are they are really impressed with the Santa by the way in the chat room. And thank you guys for being with us. I'm watching the chat, but we're just kind of in a, we're hustling through tonight. Um, yeah. the, the Santa's is the cool part. But for someone who's like, hey, that food cart idea is kind of a neat thing. Uh, if somebody's interested in that, well, how do they get started or where do they begin? Well, the first thing you're going to have to do is actually find one. I happened to buy a business that was already pre-existing since 1995. Okay. And I bought it two years ago. It, it really was our saving grace this summer because I already had popcorn carts, ice cream carts, hot dog carts. I've got four or five hot dog carts. And essentially, it's a portable steam table. And different manufacturers make them differently. One of our carts is electric, so it's like a giant crock pot. Um, we have a bunch of the rest of them. We use uh, the little ch- catering sternos underneath. Mm-hmm. So it's essentially like a, a portable uh, sternos, our portable uh, chafing dishes. Mm-hmm. And we cook everything to uh, 120 degrees for hot dogs to make sure that they're all temperature. And uh, everything we have is stainless steel, and it's all cleaned and disinfected. And and um, so that's that. I mean... The nice part about doing this novelty stuff is almost everything we do is already cooked. The mm-hmm. hot dogs technically are cooked. Popcorn is not 
going to yeah. get anybody sick. Cotton candy, you know, snow cones, things like that. So it's not like we're trying to be, you know, a food channel cook. So it's nice and it's easy. Um, so everything's almost prepped for us. I also work with a Chicago area beef guy and Italian beef sandwiches in Chicago are huge. And so my family knows a gentleman. So whenever we do the beefs, he actually makes them for us. And then all we're doing is heating them back up the next day. So we've got unbelievably fresh homemade beef sandwiches and we make them all Chicago style. So, and everybody knows you don't put ketchup on a hot dog. Okay. <laughs> Sacrilegious, I tell you. Well, you know, so, obviously you guys just don't have good brands of ketchup in Chicago. I'm just going to say it. I don't even know why they sell it in Chicago. It should be like you should be carded. If you're eight years of age or under, you're allowed to. After that, you gotta go to nope. gotta go to mustard or something else. Um. You know, listen. I've been given a lot of props for doing what I'm doing, mm-hmm. and all I'm doing is grinding. That, okay? Yeah. Every single person watching the show can do exactly what I'm doing. So I'm no smarter than anybody else in this audience. I'm just working. on I'm working my butt off. I mean, John, you and I talk off the air all the time. Yesterday I was here from 8.30 in the morning, or 8 o'clock in the morning until 8.30 at night. My first sentence session this morning was at 9 o'clock in the morning, and uh, I'll be done with you about 9 o'clock at night tonight. <clears throat> so it isn't, I'm not reinventing the wheel. I'm not the first person to come up with Santa Claus. Um, I'm just figuring out my way of doing it. And, and part of that too is, as you know, is, I went to the media and I've been doing press releases since October. And I've been very fortunate. I was in the Chicago area Daily Herald. I was in the Chicago Tribune. Um, Saturday, I was on the WGN. And then tomorrow night, on, um, I'll be on CNBC's show for a segment we taped last week. So, And then I made the big time and I'm on Jockey news. You did. You made you made the big time. Huge. I wanted to, I the wanted to spend tens, we, the dozens, dozens of, of people, people who are just who incredible. thought that they were still tuning into Jeremy Breck and I came on. <laughs> and they're like, who is what's this what's this guy with the beard? What's up with that? Mm-hmm. Uh Casey, I wanted to spend just a, we got a couple more minutes yet. Um yeah. the hustle part of it. The the well, Things were things were down at the beginning, and we there was you know we were kind of this, it was a there was shell shock there was some some depression let's call it that denial uh, and, well. and denial yeah we were going through these phases, but you hit that point where all of a sudden the, as you talk about the grind you were there and you were working it um, mm-hmm. what was your what was your motivation to to <clears throat> change that mindset where you were in there grinding away how did you how did you do that because that's tough it is tough. Um, well, listen, I'm not going to lie and say that I didn't break down crying and, uh, and lo- I've lost, I'm losing it now. Listen, I'm no different than anybody else, you know, but you just, it, it's like the Rocky Balboa quote. It's not what knocks you down, but what, what makes you get up. And, uh, listen, I'm not gonna, <clears throat> I'm not gonna let this virus beat me. I'm not gonna let the the government shutting me down beat me. I'm going to do what I got to do to put my business back up on top. And I'm hoping to be able to embrace business owners that haven't been able to make it, to bring them into my organization, to give them a way to make a living. I mean, I know a ton of DJs. Um, I started the Chicago Disc Jockey Network here after the ADJ chapter closed and for the first, I'd say, March all the way through August. We did meetings both virtually and in person. Mm-hmm. And I even brought a hot dog cart out to the ones in June and July. Right. Yeah, where remember them. We put it in our parking lot. <clears throat> we fired up a, a sound system. And I can't tell you how happy everybody was just to be out on a beautiful day. We were all socially distanced from one another and just talking about you know, about what's going on in the world and, and what we think. And, you know, the sad part is some people called me the, the angel of death because I was honest and I didn't think we would work this year. And for the most part, we didn't. Yeah. And I don't think we'll work until the third quarter of next year on a regular basis. So I'm already looking at the pivot. The minute that Santa's done, 
Um, I own a floral decor company. January 6th, one, our, our floral, floral decor websites um, will have a shopping cart system so that people can start ordering flowers in our area for Valentine's Day. Mm -hmm. And our goal is to do 100 orders of at least one dozen roses, you know, and, and that's it. So, and I'm doing what I'm doing to, to keep grinding and going and going and going and going. And listen, some of them have been a hit. Some have been a miss. I've worked the drive at the pop-up drive-in and I've walked away with 40 bucks, you know, and mm -hmm. other nights I've walked away with a couple hundred bucks, you know, the lawn signs I thought would be a lot busier than they were, but I own them and <clears throat> I'm going to continue to push them on our website and on our Facebook pages and everything else. Um, and I'm just going to keep grinding and, yeah. and it all fits together. So mm -hmm. that's the other part of it. Yeah. You know? Casey, great stuff. Um, I got, I, we'll talk about the floral thing uh, off the air. I've got a really great idea for you there. And so, but thank you much for coming on and sharing your story here from 2020. Uh, gang, we'll be right back in about one minute with Rob Frey. Thanks. Merry Christmas. All right, we are in the anchor leg of our show tonight with Rob Foray. Good evening, Rob. Hey, thank you for letting me be a part of this. Oh, thanks um, for, for coming in here and, and sharing your story of 2020 and how you have changed what you've done in the past to make this year work for you. Let's start at the beginning. What did, how did it go or what did you do? Well, yeah, I, you know, here's here's the thing is I just came off a virtual holiday party for Edward Jones, hence the outfit. So hopefully uh, people are watching this beyond the holidays they'll understand why I but uh switching. yeah so march it's march right yeah it was, and yeah. uh and uh mobile beats canceled right and yep. we don't know what to do and so um i collaborate with a couple of other djs and i do my virtual presentation we set it all up and we do it and it was an amazing thing and once I kind of figured out there's 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 possibilities of going beyond what we were doing, I had to kind of figure things out for myself. Mm -hmm. So I also created this virtual studio for myself, but I also did virtual dance parties. And I don't know, that was one other thing I wanted to do. I just wanted to be different. And I, I, I saw a lot of DJs going on Facebook, online, and doing these different parties and things like that or just streaming and i was like well you know i want to actually be with people out in the real world and so what i'm going to show you here is this was actually what i started to do these were my socially distant dance parties i would go to neighborhoods and i would perform in the middle of the street and i would have music playing um i actually collaborated with other djs as well uh, another guy in my market named brady he had a bus and we DJ out of his bus and I would just go around from neighborhood to neighborhood and uh, I actually asked for tips I would I would do it in, for tips and people would just Venmo me tips and that's what I would do it for I wouldn't sure. say hey let me just come to your neighborhood let me just perform and I think that was one of the most important things and I see a lot of DJs doing that too is just getting out there performing they're on Twitch they're doing they're not really expecting any money but they're just getting out there and performing mm -hmm. so that was the first thing I decided to do I didn't really uh, once Quarantine was over, you know, uh, April, May. For us here in Utah, that's kind of when it died off. Once the summer came, that's when my virtual dance parties died off. But I knew I needed to do something here, and that's why I pr pr made this virtual studio. And that's why I got a snazzy mic just like you. I've been inspired by like people like you who know how to use Zoom, who yeah. know how to have good audio. And you figured it out a long time ago. And so now... I'm trying to finally catch up with you, but I had to get the, the EV mic. I had to yeah. install all this stuff. But the thing is, as DJs, we're, we're quite resourceful. We probably have half of the equipment 
sitting in our garage. Yes. So that's what I did is I pieced it together. I got a Mackie mixer, which I use. I got this. Uh, I, I have my lapel mic that I use for ceremonies. Um, I have up lights that are not on right now, but I have all sorts of things. And so I just repurposed a lot of stuff. Mm -hmm. Eventually, I bought stuff that was dedicated to this area. But that's the cool thing is I already had a lot of this stuff already. And so that's kind of what I did, and I started building it. And one of the most important things I did also was I created uh, a promo video. This right here is my promo video. Actually, wait, let me. Uh, well, this right here is a video of me uh, getting on the news for doing my socially distant dance parties. And the reason I tell you that is a lot of people, and, I, and my hope is, you know, within our 15 minutes is I can just give you guys as much advice as possible. I don't really want to talk about me, 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 but I have to show you what I did yeah, exactly. to get to where I am. Yeah, yeah, and I did these I did these things on the news, right? Where they would show up and they would interview me and they would film my socially distant dance parties. And any news is good, you know, this is good news. And so we're putting it out into the world. And so now people know me as the guy who's going around to these neighborhoods and doing these socially distant dance parties. Then I created this. This is my virtual promo video for my best virtual game show ever and i wanted to create something that was unique to me that uh nobody else was doing and so i used a lot of b-roll footage from when i used to do live game shows <laughs> also yeah. when i worked with the jazz yeah. and now i can't work with the jazz i can't work with people in general so now i have to go virtual and so i also inserted uh footage of me doing virtual events so you could see all this b-roll footage and the, how did i get this b-roll footage some of it was just me playing around in my house and pretending i'm doing a game show yeah and some of it was for free now that's the hard thing is i don't know this year like any other year do you remember that first year you were in the business john yes like that hustle oh, that yes. hunger oh yeah remember and you're like we only have a hundred dollars i'll do it mm -hmm. right so we've reverted back to that. And I've had to do a lot of events for free or a lot of events for $200, $300, right? right. Yes. We have to be humble. We have to suck up our pride and we have to be able to do that. And I did a lot of free events. And that's where I got a lot of my footage. But I also call it beta testing. Mm -hmm. You know, when you can do a lot of free events and not have the stakes very high and like nobody's paying you you can test out material you can test out games you can test out things for example uh let's check this out what is this oh yeah so this right here is footage of me doing a free event i was doing free events you know you can tell my setup was a little bit different back then yeah but i had to do a free event and so what i would do is you know I'm showing my logo there. I'm like, oh crap, you know, now I got to switch it to this, you know? And so you're seeing my mistakes happen in real time, but that was like a, that was like a non-paid event. Mm -hmm. And so uh, I was able to work some stuff out. And so what I'm trying to help people realize is there are possibilities for you. What is your niche? What is something that you do really well that nobody else does? And, um, I don't know if you've had any questions come up while I've just talked because I'm just yeah, kind of no, going. Just, I, I want to make sure everybody kind of gets a little bit of value out of this. Yeah. So with that being said, uh, I could just speak like this forever about it. But here's the thing is what worked this year for me also was reaching out to a lot of past clients. So are you reaching out to past clients? Uh, I, I know that the holiday season's over and, and that might be a wash for you. But think about next year. Think about who you did production for. Who did you do conferences for? Who were you doing things for in the past? past. I know weddings are a little bit harder and uh, there's somebody you need to have on this as well. His name's Cooper Brown. He's in my same market. Cooper pivoted in a different way. He created a full virtual business where he, sorry, streaming business. I do virtual. He does streaming mm -hmm. where he goes to actual events and he does all the streaming for them. So oh, he did sure. ceremonies. He's done events. And so like just the other day I saw that he was uh, streaming the Nutcracker for a community event. Nice. And so he's just doing all sorts of things. And so he's another guy you should reach out to, folks. But you got to find out what you do really well and why people, you know, but the first people you reach out to are maybe friends, family, and people that you want to do stuff for free. Over Thanksgiving, the Thanksgiving holiday, to ramp up for uh, the Christmas season, I wanted to test out a lot of my games. So what did I do? I asked my wife's permission first, but I did Thanksgiving family game shows. Now, my normal pricing is, you know, 500 and up above, right, for, for virtual. But for family game shows, I did it for a buck 50. And I wanted to give that discount, but I also wanted to be able just to do these events. Also, you get word of mouth. 
some you do you do maybe a family game show and they say, well, uh, can you do this for my company? Yes, mm -hmm. that price is X, yeah. right? Sure. So corporate events are a little bit higher, but for family stuff, I just need to get my reps in, mm -hmm. right? We need to oh, get yeah. our times in. And where did you get re your reps in in the first place? Like back in the day, maybe maybe clubs, yep. maybe yeah. college parties, high school parties, where you probably were getting 150 bucks, maybe 400 bucks, whatever it was. So you got to get your reps in doing whatever you do. And so I'm just trying to give you guys some ideas here just to be able to start thinking about what you can do. And here's the one thing that I'm seeing a very big, huge detriment to the DJ community. I don't see DJs on LinkedIn. I see DJs playing more on Facebook and arguing on Facebook. Quit arguing on Facebook. <laughs> Quit it. Now, get on LinkedIn, level up your LinkedIn profile, and start engaging with people. Start complimenting people. Start liking. Stop, you know, start doing. And then you start putting out videos. You start putting out things. And then people, you'll start to get noticed. What I do is I also follow a bunch of meeting planners. I follow meeting planners. I friend meeting planners. And those are my people. And uh, Casey was talking a little bit about his reach. That's the cool thing about virtual is you can go anywhere in the country. Yeah. Now, I don't want to do this to brag, but I want to tell you about the possibilities. Mm -hmm. Last Thursday, I did seven virtual events. I woke up at 8 a.m., I did my first virtual virtual event at nine, and I l logged off at eight p.m. that night. Yes. Seven events. One was a school where I did a virtual dance party for elementary school kids. I went into each classroom virtually and did a fifteen-minute dance party for those kids. Then after that, I had game show after game show after game show, and so I've been extremely lucky this year, especially when it comes to the holiday season, because there's not a lot of people who do what I do. Yeah. And the other thing is my game shows are fairly unique to me. I create a lot of my games. Mm -hmm. um, I don't just do trivia. I'm like, all right, answer A, B, or C. You know, I have those games, but I want to create something that is fairly unique that nobody else is doing. Certainly. And so uh, uh, Nate Nelson, he did an awesome job when he would stream online. He, he would do his Mario Monday. He, he would do these, uh, he did these dance parties that were family oriented and he just did a whole lot of things. And, and I admire people who just put themselves out there. Casey's putting himself out there, you know, and people are just finding ways. And so either it be live, either it be virtual, there are many possibilities. Okay. I've said most of that I wanted to say, uh, any questions for you since I've been talking? <laughs> um, so, so you had put your, your demo video together and you've talked about reaching out to yeah. family and friends and past clients. Did yeah. you then circulate that demo video to these these past clients and such to to get some excitement built up for that? Or was it something that you're doing some of the free events for the community, uh, let's say, that led into these uh, other opportunities? Yeah, so a couple of things. I've also been able to be found by different booking agencies, mm. which have booked me for multiple events. So a lot of my events have come from booking agents. But yes, getting it out into the world. So you got to post it on Facebook. And here's the thing is I don't post a lot on Facebook and that is intentional. So when I do post, people pay attention. Okay. So if you're constantly putting memes out there and videos of your cats, I, okay, I do have a cat. So sometimes I do do that. But if you're, <laughs> if good. you're putting out noise and not relevant stuff, people are, people are going to ignore you. So I put it on Facebook, I put it on LinkedIn and I didn't do links to YouTube. That is a strategy that I've been doing is, you know, people like want to build up their YouTube page. I post natively on each source. Mm -hmm. So if I'm posting it to Facebook, when people are scrolling, scrolling through it, the video is already playing. It's all like, watch this amazing thing. People aren't going to jump off of Facebook, go to YouTube, watch my video and then go back. People right. want to stay on the platform they're on. Same with uh, Instagram. You can now do Instagram, you know, Instagram stories, Instagram uh, videos, reels. You have all that. I don't really use TikTok a lot, but I've been posting it on all those places. And so when I do also approach past clients, I worked with John Deere last year. I sent them a message and I said, I don't know if this is for you, but I'm doing virtual uh, game shows. I know you maybe are probably, we're planning on doing a holiday party, but I'd love to do this with you. Mm -hmm. Oh, by the way, check out the video, see if that works. And so I always kind of slide it in at the very end. You know, I, I, you know, I ask them what they think about it. I'm like, check out the video, see if it's for you. Let me know. Mm -hmm. I kind of put it in their court. I want to make them be like, well, you're, you're, you can't tell me that's not for me. You mm -hmm. know, it's like, I don't know if that's for you, but 
maybe this yeah. thing, right? Yeah, yep. And so that's what I did is I did a lot of that with some pa past clients. And I also, here's some, here's some of the things. Some of those past clients or some of the contacts don't work there anymore. So that's, that's, that's t troubling. So I just go on LinkedIn and I find the head of the company who maybe remembered me and the CEO tags me in a post and said, this happened to me. He goes, hey, Jessica, reach out to Rob. We should have him come back and do our virtual event. I didn't work with her the first time, but she found me on LinkedIn and we got connected and that's what's happening. And so you just have to find like, stop wasting your time, like arguing on, on Twitter or on Facebook or whatever, start uh, putting the good word out, show people what you do. And that's the problem. That's what we have to do. We are self promoters. As DJs, yeah. we have to self-promote the crap out of us so mm -hmm. people get noticed. And so, but don't add to the noise and don't tag people. And that's the other thing I hate is if you post it on Facebook, don't tag like 50 people and be like, hey, you know, hey, I'm doing this thing. And then you have to untag it. Anyway, don't do that. Just put it out there. People will share it. It'll get out there. Um, Rob, one, there's two, I got two questions and we got we to, yes. we're getting to the end. Um, first up, comparing the amount of hustle in 2019 to Rob Frey's hustle in 2020, same, more, less, different, um, compare and contrast. Yeah, it's, Go. it's more, it's more. A lot of my leads were coming in naturally with you know the DJ business. I've been in business 13 plus years, right? A lot of those leads started coming in and it was, it was kind of turnkey where leads would come in, I'd do that. But this year there's been a lot more. I had to work a lot harder this year, but I loved it because I was doing something different and yeah. I looked to change what I was doing. And so that's what I was doing. I, I did a lot more. What, 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 was there one more question? And then, and then uh, people want to reach out and get in touch with you and ask questions or, or pick you, whatever. Um, how, how can they reach out to you? Yeah, just uh, reach out to me at Rob Foray uh, on LinkedIn, uh, uh, LinkedIn, Twitter, Instagram, whatever at Rob .com. Also, you can find me there. So uh, there's a lot of places where you can find me, but uh Personally, uh, best place is uh, reach out on Instagram, send me a message. But also, if you're a DJ that wants to level up your LinkedIn, find me on LinkedIn. Let's have a conversation. Let's get sure. you leveled up. Sounds great, Rob. I appreciate your time and, and your passion for the industry. And thank you guys for being with us tonight and this night. Hopefully, you got a couple of ideas, a couple of tips, and maybe some inspiration as we head into 2021. Rob, once again, thanks for being with me tonight. Good night. Thanks, everybody. guys. Bye.